Hi friends, Ray Lutz here at uh, the Cobo Hall in Detroit, Michigan. It is uh, December, what, the 8th? Um, this is uh, Thursday. The recount started basically on, on Monday in most, most of the counties. And this morning, they've all been turned off. No more recounts. Uh, so what I want to do right now is give a bit of a summary of what I found here in my ex uh, investigation and what we're up against this time. Uh, I was able to go to a number of counties. I first went up to Oakland because they started theirs first. Um, that's a bit north of Detroit, um, generally a white upper middle class type of area uh, and a big nice facility there. Um, then I went over the next day to uh, Macomb County. Um, you have to say that right because they say it kind of weird from what I used to say, Macomb, Macomb. And it is a bit to the east um, uh, from Oakland. And then in the, later in the day, I came down here to Detroit. Then I went over to Flint, went over to Lansing. I went over to Ann Arbor uh, and, and back here. So I saw a bunch of different things going on. The first day, I didn't even notice that they were doing the suppression of recounting, where they were not deeming uh, some of the counties as recountable. And they have a hair trigger on this, where if the, the case, the, the uh, contained where the ballots are, are contained has any the has a seal or a tag on it for security if that's broken or in any way interrupted or if there's a hole in the canvas comes their canvas bag then they say okay we're not going to recount these we're going to go back to the computer result but even worse if the number of ballots in the uh, container is does not match the paperwork. And that could be just chicken scratch, you know, numbers that are revised several times uh, on the paperwork. They say, oh, it doesn't match. Okay, put it back in the box. We're not going to recount it either. And the first day in Oakland, they had one that was not recounted. So they had about 35 tables working. And one out of 35, and they have about they're about 10% of what they're going to do because they had around 350 precincts. So they were doing like 10 precincts per table was their their idea of having do 10% at a time. So all the tables were working at once. They're all doing one precinct. And at the end of that one precinct, they had one of the 35 was bad. But they were going to be doing that 10 times more. So it was like 10%. So I estimated at that time if they continued with that sample trend, which only had one data point, that we'd have about 50 to 60,000 ballots uncounted statewide. Come down here to Detroit, and it's even more of a mess. Uh, here, even with the uh, absentee ballots, which should be perfect because those were brought into the central facility. Those were not done by just random people out at the precinct somewhere. These are vote by mail or absentee ballots as they call them here and here you have to have you have to give them an excuse to be absentee you can't just get it permanently like they do in California so that uh, that situation was that they had an absentee precinct they first counted they thought the count was right they went ahead and tallied or separated out and sorted them found they had four or five additional votes for Clinton over Trump then they added those up and says, oh, these don't add up. Then they recounted it two or three more times, could not get the same number. And this may sound uh, inconceivable. I think most human beings don't think counting is that hard. But when you count ballots, it's so monotonous that it's easy to get screwed up. But they couldn't get the same number. And so then they said, okay, well, this is uncountable. You had both the Trump people and the Clinton people badgering back and forth and interrupting. And so it, it's the, these, these groups were taking too much of a part and upsetting all of the uh, 
the workers there. So they couldn't Stein. Stein. But Stein. Stein sometimes wasn't even there because there wasn't enough people to go around in the Detroit room. Sometimes there was a Stein, sometimes there was a Clinton, sometimes, almost always there was a Trump because they had, and interestingly th here, I think, I found this very kind of sad. They allow Trump hats, Trump t-shirts, any kind of, you know, uh, overwhelming display of partisanship that was going on in these rooms. And a, a kind of a climate, I think, uh, where the Trump people were trying to suppress this. So now we're in a mode where we have, at the higher level, a challenge to the idea that Stein can even be a valid, can be valid to ask for the recount. Let's face it, why shouldn't anybody be able to ask for a recount if they want to pay for it? Um, Stein says she'll pay for it. Let it be recounted. No, they want to shut it down. So Trump's lawyers are in there shutting this thing down. And so late last night, it was shut down. Nobody showed up. In fact, they're packing all the boxes up, even though uh, Stein, uh, Jill Stein said, maybe we'll get it overturned. Well, guess what? This is a Republican state. In other words, the Secretary of State is a Republican person. And, and so that means that uh, on the ballot, everything that's Republican is first. And they get uh, top billing. And in addition, you have uh, the Republican wanting to turn this off and make it very hard to turn back on. So in essence, we have a, uh, at so many levels, a dispute over what can be done and what should be done and what's proper. You have ballots that are being, that are being thrown out, many precincts. Here in Detroit City, they said nearly half of the precincts in Detroit were uncountable. So that's, a, you know, guess what? It's mostly Democratic areas are de determined to be uncountable. Let's think for a second. What if you want to attack the election? What exactly would you do? You want to go into specific precincts and flip the numbers. Then it's easy here. All you have to do is cut the seal of those boxes and then they're never recounted. So you can cover your tracks very easily if you can get to the boxes. Or on the paperwork, change the number. Uh, or change it to the computer, maybe change the computer number and they'll say, oh, it doesn't match, so we're not gonna count. So any little thing that's wrong makes it uncountable. You know what, those are the precincts that should be counted. I, actually, don't count the rest of them. They're only the ones that have the the stuff that looks wrong. All those, if it looks perfect, why are you recounting it? You want to recount the ones that don't look right. They have the law absolutely backwards, which is usually the case. We see this all the time. The law should be one way that's all upside down. We've got an upside down world here. But we did learn a few things. Let's talk about what we did learn. Number one, hand counted paper ballots being able to hand count the ballots is essential to be able to go back to those original records. However, it is not a panacea. Hand counted paper ballots does not solve everything because you have all the jury rigging, you have all of the, are they really the same paper ballots that you had to begin with? Or are they, have they been tampered with? Is the count the same? Do we just change the count and then it's unreliable and so forth? So uh, this is the other thing that we saw, and this was very startling. We came back today, went up to the room where they had all the counting going on here in Detroit, looked into the room, and these people became very flustered. It seemed like they were over there manipulating the numbers, trying to, to change things so that the things looked their way. Who knows what they were doing, because they became very um, frustrated, talking about, oh, we don't want any pictures taken. I haven't done my hair today, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is an example of later when we're thinking about it, saying, hmm, was it really because she didn't have her hair done that day? Because chances are it'd be hard to really fix that hair up enough to make it much better than it was. So 
it had to be uh, we had to suspect what is going on there and at least to notice gee something could be going on there uh, after hours because no one is there right now all of the observers have left and yet there's all this opportunity for them to be fiddling with the numbers with the ballots with the with the box the boxes are being carted around um, anybody could just go up there snip snip one of the the seals and guess what and that's not countered anymore so hand counter paper ballots even though they're essential not a panacea but what we do need to be pushing for i want to assert this my point of view that a lot of people are now coming around on is that we need to have these ballots imaged, cast into images, put into a form that is shared so that anybody can get those ballots and they can look at them later and they can make recounting much, much easier. In fact, look, if you just give me the images, I'll run it across my software and generate my own, my own tally. Let the Democrats do it, let the Republicans do it. You know, most of them, they're, they're going to agree on almost all of the ballots. And only those ones that don't agree, those are the ones we look at. All this time and effort is theater, strictly theater, to make everyone think this election is trustworthy. Guess what? We had, they had to, they had to put a stop to this recount because they were getting themselves deeper and deeper in a hole of non-confidence in the election. They had so many precincts that were uncountable. Everyone was saying, we don't trust anything that goes on here anymore. So the guys on top had to say, we're putting a stop to this, this, this recounting. We've got to stop it because we're, this is becoming a complete mess out of control. Even the Trump supporter that interviewed. Yeah, we talked, to, we talked to a Trump supporter today who who was saying the same thing, that, that uh, you, they were worried about the trustworthiness of the... Look, Trump, Trump used to say, oh, we're worried about rigging of the election, right? Election could be rigged. Then, well, let's recount. Oh, we don't want to do that anymore because I've already won. Well, did, Trump did say that. He, he would call for, keep saying that it was rigged unless he won, and then he would stop doing it. Indeed, that's what he did. Now you have a lot of pushback from the Trump camp saying, you know, we don't want it recounted. We don't want to do any of this, this sort of thing. Everything is fine. But some of the supporters, you talk to them separately, and they, they indeed do find it worrisome. Recounting of this scale, where we had several states involved, is something I haven't really even witnessed firsthand. I don't know if in my lifetime if we've ever done such a thing. We're getting a big beep back here. Is that going to be trouble? Yeah, go watch. Can we come back? Uh, can we put it on pause? Is there a pause button? No, 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 no. Just keep talking. Just okay, keep talking. so there, I think it's probably fine. These microphones, we have a microphone here. Uh, ask someone to comment. Uh, and so if you're being it's irritated by that big beep back Holly there. Holly or Mara. Holly or Mara, can you tell us how, how, if you're hearing that beep? Yeah. It's probably going to go away. Questions. See if anybody has any anybody questions. Anybody have any questions out there? Okay, questions, bring them on. If you have questions, uh, we're trying to see if this beeping this is really irritating to us, if you guys can hear it. So let me finish up then. I think they're, they're turning it down. We had a number of states look into recounting. Uh, I hope that they can, we can actually make some headway on Florida. Florida was actually very, very close, just over 1% difference, about 114 thousand ballots out of some nine million and so they could be very easily uh worked up there okay. sounds okay Pens so pennsylvania they're going to be looking into that tomorrow i hear um wisconsin we've are, we just i think finished up with wisconsin and a lot of things have come out of that so this process even though it seems like to many people oh why is jill stein doing this she can't win uh, you're right. Jill Stein can't win. She might be able to get herself up to 5% if she's extremely lucky and then get a, a seat on the, you know, the main ticket or the debate stage and so forth. Funding. But, and, and funding. But basically, uh, 
uh, no, she's probably not going to make that. And but that's not the point here. The point here is that to exercise our democracy and our election system, you have to go through this. Great question. Can, can citizens sue for a recount like Florida? No, and I understand even Joel Stein can't do it. Well, re re rephrase the question. So, so, uh, so the question is, uh, can any citizen uh, sue for? Uh, for a recount, and I understand the answer is no. Uh, any citizen here can. In fact, Jill Stein, who is a candidate, the federal courts have ruled that she there's no way that she can win, and therefore they're stopping the recount on that basis. So, uh, if you were a citizen, you would have no basis at all. In fact, in the rooms, you can't even get into the room unless you're with a party. It's hard to be an observer, a nonpartisan observer like myself, who says, look, I'm nonpartisan, I just want to come into the room. They say, well, which party are, are you with? You've got to pick one. I go, well, I don't want to pick a party. I just want to come in and see what you're doing. Okay, well, then you're, you're, you can't really come in. You have to stand way over there. Not all places do that. Some of them didn't uh, hassle me like that, but some of them were, you know, hassling me um, to that extent. Question about Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin, what is the question about uh, Wisconsin? Have you done a public records request for machine counting counties in Wisconsin? There is a, uh, uh, a project that we're working on to request ballot images of pretty much all counties in the state that we're interested in, top 175, and those are really the only ones that do this, um, but not all of them are doing it, and ask for those um, ballot images. We do know from the courts that the ballot images are part of the election process that has to be preserved for 22 months by federal law. All right, this is an important question. This goes to uh, and our compadre here. I'm sorry to cut you off, but Clinton, can Clinton sue for Michigan recount? Okay, let me finish this point though. Uh, and in that you have to preserve the ballot images for 22 months because it's part of the process. The machines take a picture of the ballot, and that's where you extract the vote from. And some of these counties, like the ones that I encountered, like Pinellas County in Florida, were deleting the images right away, and a lot of them do that. They turn the switch that says delete all the images. Well, that's not a valid court of action. They have to save them. And then, and our project, and other people are participating, is to request those ballot images so that we can then develop our own software and system so that we can then just quickly take the ballot images from a county, run them across our software, extract the vote, and, and then compare that to what they're doing. With that system in place, there's no way that they can really cheat because we can look at all the ballots. Except there are ways to cheat. Let me just thought myself. There are still ways to cheat the system by registration crap, by, you know, ha Got getting to the polls, monkeying with the voter database, getting a vote by mail ballot, all of that stuff at the front end, it's still a problem. We still have to ad address those things the best that we can. It doesn't solve everything, but it does solve this manipulation of the central tabulator count, which is the biggest, easiest way to just flip an election without doing all that other rig. Now, going back to what was it, Wisconsin was the question? No, Michigan. Clinton, can Clinton oh. sue Michigan? Uh, can Clinton this, sue this in Michigan? What she was saying about, uh, no, I, well, I think she could. I think Clinton could sue in Michigan if she wanted to. But Clinton doesn't have an appetite for that. And in fact, the people here that were representing or, you know, volunteers under the Clinton banner were not really participating to that extent. They were considered observers but not, uh, you know, they weren't able to challenge things to the degree that Trump would be able to or Stein would be able to. But really, I, in my view, should have been. I mean, what is the problem with Hillary Clinton? Why? Yeah, why, does, why is Hillary, well, I think the reason we know why is she said already the election can't be rigged, and so I don't want to contaminate what I said before and so I'm going to go with that no matter what. What is that? It's a defect in her own mind. One reason people didn't vote for Hillary is that she doesn't actually, she's, she's persuaded by the people around her too much to think a certain thing. 
And that's why a lot of people didn't like Hillary. Or, or it's the quantum factor, that the fact that this has been done over in, 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 in this very democratic city. And okay, we're getting a comment. Look, she may have rigged uh, Detroit. She oh, rigged Detroit. so the question is, did Hillary rig Detroit? Um, why would Hillary rig Detroit for uh, Trump? Well, it wouldn't be this time. It would be in the primary. The primary would have been when she could have rigged it against Bernie. For here, I mean, they could uncover her rigging right now. And so maybe Trump and her... I don't think they can uncover her rigging right now. Uh, but let's just put that aside. I'm going to try to address what happened here. So there's a lot that we can learn here from this. There's a lot that, uh, that I learned. I mean, this unrecountable thing. This unrecountable was the biggest single, like, rigging that they have set up here. The rigging of the system is because they say those precincts completely unrecountable. We'll go with the machine count because the numbers are a little bit off. That is completely absurd. And it's something that we put out a press release saying how absurd it was. We wanted a ruling on it. The people up in um, Macomb County said we can't do any investigation. We can't, uh, you know, find, try to find out what was happening. Look, if it says explain it, if, if you say we're, you're asked to explain something, that means you have to investigate. You have to try to explain it. That means you have to look at all the facts. Now, we don't really know how this is going to pan out from this point, but as I said, the Secretary of State has done as much as possible to make it really difficult to restart. All of the boxes have been sent back to the counties. And so then if Jill Stein says, yeah, we got the courts to agree with us, we're going to restart, then they have to bring them all back in and make it really hard and expensive to do it to, to complete. So the question. The question was uh, about the recap for Bernie. I don't, know how to, I don't know if you know anything about that or not. Okay, Bernie, the question is, what about the recount for Bernie? Um, was there ever one there, there was not really a recount for Bernie. Um, uh, we tried to, in California, we tried to stop the Bernie. Uh, we tried to intervene in that. Uh, we tried to contest the election in that. But what happened there? There was a different rigging that went on there. The different rigging was this year, unlike almost every other year, uh, election year, they had moved the conventions up several months so that they occurred almost instantly after the end of the primary. Primary happened. If you wanted to try to contest it in short in court, tough beans because the convention happened. Bernie Sanders already um, gave up. Hillary Clinton was already crowned. It's over. So then in the court, they say, it's moot. You can't do anything about it at this point. Why? Because the parties really are in control. They control who they select as their nominee. It doesn't really matter what the vote was. They can decide whoever they want, even if they can choose the vote as advice. So at that level in the primary, the vote is not as determining as the party machine. And unfortunately, what Bernie was up against was a party machine against him. DNC, as we know now from the WikiLeaks exposure, was working against Bernie, and that's why he got, didn't get a, uh, enough of a shake. Had Bernie been nominated, I think he probably would have won the election because he was a much stronger candidate without those weaknesses, without the uh, email issue, without the, um, you know, Bill Clinton's affairs and all the other things they tried to bring into play. Um, and, of course, uh, it was that last-minute email thing that, you know, kind of hurt Hillary at the end. And saying, okay, the, the investigation is back on, now it's off. However, Bernie was also not vetted as well. Maybe could have gone the other way because he had, uh, he had the stigma of being a socialist. All of that was not really, you know, something that we knew how that was going to pan out. A lot of people are afraid of that very word to the extent that they just freak out. And so they won't ever vote for somebody like that. And also the, the freebies and so forth he wanted to, that he was pushing for. Not to say they would ever get that. Okay, so uh, I think we probably have strayed far from what the original intent was here to give you a, a, a review of what's happened. 
Um, I'm going to be here for a few more days talking to people and kind of interviewing and, and finding out what their, their input was and sort of reporting on everything. But I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, I hope that we can learn from this and as we go forward have you participate as much as possible in getting our elections under control because they're a mess. Ray Lutz, Citizens Oversight. Goodbye.